when we were balancing equations in the previous slides, we were using something called uh, Lavoisier principle, the law of cons conservation of mass. Lavoisier was the, um, the French chemist that came up with this idea in the 17th, 18th century. It means that mass is not cre nor created nor destroyed, it's only transformed. So you, you have some reagents, they react and they become products. So you have different compounds, but the amount of stuff you've got, 10 grams, 5 grams, 20 kilos, 1 kilo, is the same. The mass of reagents is equal to the mass of products. And the number and type of atoms that you have as reagents and products does not change. What it changes is how they are arranged. When you have, you know, those hydrogens and those oxygens in the reagents, and then you have them in molecule of water, that the reaction has happened. But you have the same amount of reagents that you have of products, and the atoms haven't changed. We covered the concept of atomic mass in a previous video, and I would encourage you to have a look at those um, at that at those videos uh, in previous weeks. The concept of atomic um, atomic mass: uh, the elements have a particular atomic mass, and there is a relative scale. It's, uh, it's mentioned in something called atomic mass units, and it's a relative scale. All the atoms have a mass which is related to the um, um, the mass. 1 12th of the mass of 12 grams of carbon 12. And, um, and, and, and that gives us a, a relative scale of, of masses of the different atoms in atomic mass units. And we talked briefly why it's easier to measure atoms in atomic mass units. And that's because you end up with, for example, the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1, the atomic mass of oxygen is 16. Um, the atomic mass of chlorine is 35 point something. Uh, and those are more, much more easier numbers to use than if we were going to measure the mass of hydrogen, one atom of hydrogen, which is one proton and one electron, and it would be something 10 to the minus 27 or 10 to the minus um, 24 grams or minus 27 kilograms, which is a very awkward, a very awkward n uh, numbers to use. So a molecular mass is the mass of a compound, uh, the mass, the sum of all the atomic masses of all the atoms in its formula. So you go to the periodic table, look at the atomic masses of all those elements that make uh, your, the compound you are looking at. You add them up in the right number, and that's what the molecular mass of your compound is. So I'm going to ask you to stop the video now and have a go at calculating the molecular mass for all the compounds you've got in, in this slide. Stop the video now, please. So hopefully you stop the video and have a go at trying to calculate all those molecular masses. Um, the first compound you've got on the left hand side, H2O, that's a molecule of water. And if I look at the molecular mass of, of water, I've got uh, two atoms of hydrogen and each of them is one atomic mass unit and one atom of oxygen. And in the periodic table, you can see that, well, in some tables you will see 15.99. I'm going to pick 16 just for ease of remembering the number and gives me a grand total of 18 atomic mass units. If I look at the compound right below HCl, that's hydrogen chloride, if you have it in gas form or hydrochloric acid, if you have it in, in aqueous in, in, in solution with water. Again, I've got uh, two atoms. and one of each, so uh, one atomic mass unit for the hydrogen and the molecular mass of chlorine is give or take 35.45 and that gives me 36.45 atomic mass units. If I go to the compound that you've got in the top right hand side, C3H6O, that's acetone, that's a molecule of acetone. We've got the molecular mass is carbon, has an atomic mass of 12, and you have three atoms of carbon. You've got six atoms of hydrogen and one, um, one atom of oxygen, and that's a total of 56 atomic mass units. And finally, the compound, the last compound is called ammonium sulfate. 
And now I've got uh, a few more, well, I have a few more atoms and in a slightly larger quantities. So I've got two atoms of nitrogen, because that too in a parenthesis affects everything that is inside the parenthesis, in this case double seat. So I've got two atoms of nitrogen and the molecular mass of nitrogen is 14. I've got eight atoms of hydrogen, sorry. I've got one atom of sulfur and the atomic mass of sulfur is give or take 32. And finally, I've got four hydrogens, each of them uh, 16. And that gives me a total of 132 give or take atomic mass units.